you're a software engineer, you're probably pretty worried about everything happening around AI and large language models. Here's what one of you wrote below my recent video about GPT engineer. And there were more comments basically saying, well, we're all going to be replaced within a couple of years. So today I want to cover seven things you can do as a software engineer to help you not only survive this avalanche of AI tools, but maybe even thrive in it. And at the same time, I'd like to address one of the comments you made and share some of my own thoughts. Now, nobody knows, of course, exactly what's going to happen. And I'm not going to talk about long-term singularity stuff, though. That's really fascinating. I'll focus on the coming years and what I think will make the most sense for us in the short term. You might say, hey, just another YouTuber trying to push us off the cliff even faster. And maybe I am naive for not advocating now for a complete stop on all AI development. But the truth is, I believe we're way past that point already. And I think our only option is to make sure all of these new developments are actually channeled into something that helps humanity. And I'm convinced that the way to do it is to approach all of these new developments with a positive and optimistic mindset instead of trying to fight it. And that's also my first point. AI, machine learning, of course, these are very powerful tools. We've seen the possibilities over the past months. And instead of fighting these tools, I think we should embrace them, learn about them, and try to use them, make them part of our workflow. This can mean using AI tools as part of your development workflow, things like GitHub Copilot, that's gonna help you work faster, but it can also mean integrating AI more directly in the software that you actually write. Jason made a good point in that he thinks this will replace developers in the same way that standard libraries replace developers. It's just going to make our lives easier and it's going to make it easier to create more better, higher quality software. This is in the same line of thinking as what Tanner is saying, and that the ones who leverage all of this new technologies are the ones that are not going to be left behind. I totally agree with this. We don't want to be Luddites and ignore everything that's happening around us because in the end, these are tools that are there to serve us, to help us. So we should use them to do what we do in a better way. And in particular, I think these tools are now really helpful in creating quickly boilerplate code, getting set up quickly, and then you do the more engaging, creative things with the code that was generated. Now, in order to know what kind of boilerplate setup you need, you have to think through the overall design first. And I've written a guide to help you do that. It's totally free. You can get it by going to ion.gold slash design guide. It covers everything you need to know to design a new piece of software from scratch. Hopefully it will help you avoid some of the mistakes that I made in the past. ion.gold slash design guide. The link is also in the description of this video. The second point I want to make is that you can use AI to learn way more quickly. So tech industry is of course always evolving. So it's really important that we stay updated on what's happening. And this includes understanding capabilities, but also limitations of large language models, how they can be used, ethical, practical considerations that surround them. I find AI incredibly useful in collecting, filtering, organizing information for me. And I use it a lot in that way. By learning faster, you'll also be more ready for what's going to change in the job market. For example, Jay Chen comments that he expects that there will be a slump in junior dev hiring. But as technology becomes more ubiquitous, companies are going to redefine what that job actually means. And then code interviews might not be so much about specific coding tricks, but more about architectural considerations prompt engineering, etc. And if you're able to leverage AI to learn quicker, become better quicker, then you have a much higher chance of landing a job like that. So a third thing you can do is specialize. Large language models are really good at performing general tasks, but they can't beat the specialized knowledge of an expert yet. So you could consider specializing in a particular area of software engineering where you can provide a lot of value that a general purpose AI cannot. So this could be in highly specialized areas like cybersecurity, blockchain development, or quantum computing. But of course, you could also specialize in creating AI yourself. And another thing is that by specializing yourself, you're actually putting yourself in a better place of successfully interacting with AIs. Like Personal Miss is writing that in order to use AI effectively, you're going to need to have basic knowledge. And the more knowledgeable you are about a subject, the better questions you can ask and the better results you're going to get when you work with AI tools. You can also go in the other direction and gain knowledge in other disciplines like business or psychology. Or one area where AI is not yet very good is understanding subtleties of user experience. If you can build skills in UX design and research, you're going to be able to create 
products that will not only function well, but are also going to create a great experience to the user. And overall, being interdisciplinary helps you understand broader implications of your work and help you make better informed decisions. And that kind of perspective at the moment can't be replicated by AI. As Joe Kwan writes, coding is actually only 10 or 20% of an engineer's job. You have to interact with the team. You're part of a business which has its own processes. You may need to interact with customers. There's a ton of other things that you might need to do that isn't covered by a coding AI tool. What do you think is more important? Should you specialize and become really good at a particular subject? Or should you generalize, become interdisciplinary and gain a broader perspective? Let me know in the comments. Another thing you can do is focus on being innovative. AI is great at optimizing things and performing routine tasks, but it still struggles with innovation and creative thinking. Although some of you made the point that AI is going to be better at this than us really soon. For example, here's a comment writing that there's very little new solutions in the industry and that AI is going to be able to explore, experiment with problem space wider and faster than humans really soon. And then it's going to create better solutions than we can. Now, that might very well be possible. I don't know that, but I still think that it's a good bet to at least in the short term focus on being able to think outside the box, come up with innovative and creative solutions as that matches well with the capabilities of AI today. Another thing where you can set yourself apart is to become better at understanding security and privacy concerns, especially on the business side. This is a major concern. For example, some businesses don't allow their developers to use tools like GitHub Copilot because it sends code to GitHub and they don't want that. And that makes a lot of sense because currently it's completely unclear what's happening with all that data that was sending to these proprietary AI models. This is also the gist of what Not Quite Him writes in their comments. On the other hand, what Casimistico writes is that LLMs will move to free or open source models, which may be a good solution to all of these security issues. In the end though, a lot of companies still want to have a real human who's responsible for something, so they know who to sue if something goes wrong. The final thing that I think is important you should do is to develop soft skills. Skills like communication, leadership, empathy, and teamwork are still highly valuable and are difficult for AIs to replicate. And developing these skills further can set you apart from an AI tool. I mean, ultimately, somebody needs to talk with customers or other stakeholders. And part of the value that you bring is by not being a machine and understanding the human side of things. Because in the end, businesses serve humans. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. By the way, one way to train your soft skills is by joining my free Discord server. It's a really nice community that has a lot of knowledgeable people. Make sure to say hi when you join. I always wave back. Overall, my approach with all of these new developments is to not try to compete with it, but instead find a way to work alongside these technologies and then use them to enhance your own capabilities and your productivity. And if you're still watching, this means that you're one of the few people who's actually concerned with staying ahead of the game. And regardless of what will happen in the long term, that's a pretty good place to be in. If you want to get started building tools to use AI, the best way to do that is to watch this video next, where I show you exactly how to do that. Thanks for watching and take care.